31, let's take a look at another example where we're going to use the quadratic formula. Uh, in this case, something a little bit funky will happen, so I want us to see the funk. So we're going to solve this equation using the quadratic formula. And when you want to use the quadratic formula, you want your, your quadratic equation set to zero. So I have a couple of options. I can move the 4x squared over to the side of the equation with subtraction, or I can move the 3x and the 5 over to the left side of the equation if I wanted to. Now, it's probably just a little bit simpler to move the 4x squared over because you're only moving one term, whereas you have to move both the 3x and the 5. But I'm going to move the 3x and the 5 because for me personally, I like having a positive lead coefficient. So again, you don't have to do that, but I'm going to opt to do that. So when I move the 3x squared, excuse me, the 3x and the 5 over, I have 4x squared minus 3x plus 5 would be equal to 0. So I have my quadratic equation in standard form set equal to 0. I can now identify a, b, and c. All right, and let me put a little division line there, and let's, let's get going. So my solution will be x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. And let's start simplifying that a little bit. So if I look at this, a negative of negative 3 is positive 3 plus or minus, all right, 3 squared or negative 3 quantity squared is 9. Um, 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 5 is 80, so I have 9 minus 80, and I'm going to divide that by 2 times 4, which is 8. Okay, so simplifying that a little bit more, let's take a look. We have 3 plus or minus the square root of, well, 9 minus 80 is negative 71. That's going to be in ratio to 8. Uh, for negative 71, again, I, I mentioned before, whatever the radicand winds up being, that, that b squared minus 4ac, it has its own vocabulary term. It's referred to as the discriminant, and we will talk about that in a later example. But I want you to notice the discriminant is negative here. Right? In example 5, it was positive, but it's negative here. So I, we've talked about when you have negative radicals, the first thing you want to do is take out that imaginary unit. Now for 71, I don't believe anything divides into 71. Uh, here's how you can check it on your calculator. You can go through all the numbers that might divide into 71. So I could try 71 divided by 2. Okay, that doesn't work. 71 divided by 3. 71 divided by 4. And then it'll come up to, and we'll keep going through the list, but then when do you stop? Well, here's the, the cutoff for where you stop. You can stop when the square of this number is larger than the one you're dividing into. So, so go with me for a moment. 2 squared is 4. It's not larger than 71. 3 squared is 9, not larger than 71. 4 squared is 16, not larger than 71, which means I keep going. So let me try 71 divided by 5. That doesn't work. Okay, 5 squared is 25, not larger than 71. Keep going. All right, not dividing evenly. 6 squared is 36, not larger than 71. All right, 49 doesn't work, right? And then we'll try 71 divided by 8 doesn't work. 71 divided by 9 doesn't work, but 9 squared is larger than 71. So I can stop. I'm done at this point. 71 is a prime number. So I'm just going to hold tight, and there is my solution. So for this example, because my discriminant was negative, I actually had two imaginary solutions for this problem. All right, so we're going to flip to the next page, review some factoring, and apply that quadratic formula one more time. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.